It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Most Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. You know, being a cowboy, you need lots of energy. That's why Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal I like for strength and energy. Just two minutes after you eat a big bowl full, that whole wheat energy starts going to work for you. Try Grape Nuts Flakes buckaroos. They're great. And now... Outside a well-kept ranch house in the southern end of Paradise Valley, a strange conversation takes place. I can't ever let my wife and my boy find out. I'll give you money, Sherm. You get out of Paradise Valley. I don't want money, George. All I want is a chance to settle down and work. I have a wife and youngster, too, you know. You'll never work in these parts. I'll see to it that you don't. We both have too much to hide to live in the same territory. Some days later, Roy Rogers and Pat Brady, with Trigger, Bullet, and Nellie Bell, are hunting strays at the far southern tip of the Double R Bar Ranch. They come upon two youngsters glaring at each other and about ready to square off when our friends interrupt them. All right, kids. If you don't want to tell me what the fight's about, why don't you shake hands and forget the whole thing? I don't want to shake hands with him. Always bragging just because his father can fly an airplane. Oh, I'm taking my horse and riding home. And I'm not shaking hands. Oh, don't be so stubborn, Pete. I should think you'd be glad to have a friend your own age in the neighborhood. Oh, he's no friend of mine. <laughs> he hadn't got a horse and he lives in that dirty old shack down by the arroyo. Get up here. And on top of that, his father's an ex-convict. Why, you... I'll get you for that the next time I see you. I don't want to see you. Stay away from me. <laughs> hey, just a minute, son. You're new around here, and young Pete Adams certainly wasn't very nice. But you know something? What? Neither Pat nor I heard a word he said when he rode away. I don't care if you heard it or not. Guess it doesn't make any difference anyway. Guess nobody will ever let my dad alone. Well, now, folks in Paradise Valley are mostly mighty neighborly. Uh, I bet me and Roy could introduce you to some kids you'd have a lot of fun with. Sure, we aim to make all strangers feel at home. I'm Roy Rogers, and this is Pat Brady. And we can use an extra hand to look for strays. While we're working, you can tell us all about yourself. Will you pay me? I don't like to ask it, but my folks need money pretty bad. Why, sure we'll pay you. And maybe there's something else we can do to help. First off, what's your name? Uh, Don Alexander. Don? All right, Don. Now, would you rather ride in that Jeep with Pat or up here on trigger with me? Uh, Nellie Bell's a sight more comfortable, Don, I'll tell you that. Gee, never rode in a Jeep before, and I never saw such a beautiful horse. I'll tell you what. Why don't I ride partway with Pat and partway with Roy and then walk partway with the swell dog? Don, you're a born diplomat. <laughs> Let's go. Will there be anything else, Mr. Adams? No, thanks, Miss Evans. I uh, still think you're making a mistake in hiring an ex-convict, Rogers. I had a long talk with Sherm Alexander George, and I'm convinced he's gone absolutely straight. Well, as I understand it, the term Alexander served in Kansas was for stealing cattle. He'd be the last person in the world I'd hire as a ranch hand. Well, you didn't hire him, George. I did. And I'm going to see to it that he has another chance. All right, Rogers. But I warned you. Look, Mr. Adams, when you settled down here after the war, we didn't go around asking a lot of embarrassing questions. No, we didn't. As far as we were concerned, you were just an ex-army pilot and a nice guy. 
and everybody in Paradise Valley went out of their way to help you make a go of your ranch. Well, I'm not an ex-convict. Good night. Adams, you ought to at least let your youngster and Sherm's boy, Don, get to be friends in their own way. They're both nice kids, and they shouldn't start with two grown-up strikes against them. Sure, they're nice kids. In fact, they even look quite a lot alike. Don't ever say that again, Brady. My son does not look like the son of an ex-convict, and I've forbidden him to play with Don. Good night. Well, he doesn't have to try to break the glass in the door. I can't imagine what's gotten into George Adams. He's been around here long enough to know that we live and let live in Paradise Valley. Oh, some people are just nastily born stuffy about things like that. How's Sherm working out around the ranch, Roy? Well, three days really isn't enough to tell, but uh, he seems to be a mighty good hand. Well, he knows cattle, I'll tell you that. Roy's put him in charge of those heifers he's developing for the breeding herd. Well, I certainly hope it works out. Mrs. Alexander is so nice, and she did such a wonderful job of bringing up Don while his dad was in prison. And now that Sherm has a good job, well, she'll get the medical attention she's needed for so long. Say, Dale, if you don't need Pat anymore, we'd better be getting back to the double R bar. We're still short-handed, and we both have to get up pretty early in the morning. Oh, that's all right. I can close up without Pat. <gasps> oh, oh, boy, it's a pleasure to be able to go to bed every night instead of staying up every other night to keep watch on that herd like Roy and me were doing before we got Sherm. Well, so far, Sherm's handling everything just fine. And if he has the spirit to work 16 hours a day, I'm glad to pay him for it. Hey, Roy. Roy, I just talked to Sherm, and he says that two of those purebred heifers were missing this morning. What? Well, those were valuable animals. Let's go out and help Sherm look for signs. Well, Sherm says he's been looking since daybreak. He claims that there ain't no tracks leading away from the herd at all. Sherm, are you sure you aren't getting too tired and falling asleep while you're circling the herd on your horse? No, Roy. I haven't closed an eye in the past three nights, I'm sure. Yet one or two of the herd have been missing about every morning. I guess it looks pretty bad for me. Listen, I don't want you to even think about that, Sherm. We talked the whole thing out, and you told me you've gone straight, and I believe you. I just can't understand how the heifers get out of the herd without leaving any tracks. It's got me licked, Pat. We've covered every inch of the ground, and there's nothing to show where those critters went. That makes 12 in three weeks. Well, if you'll find me a hoof print in this dust, I'll eat it. And I've been looking so hard that I ain't even noticed I was on horseback instead of in Nellie Bell. Well, you can track much better on horseback than you can from a car. The trouble is we can't find any tracks. Hey, Roy! Roy, Pat! I've got to see you a minute. Ooh, ooh, there, fella. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Hey, Don, you ride that horse Roy gave you like he was born on him. Yeah, you came snorting up here like... Why, Don, what's the matter? Roy, I shouldn't come to you like this, but I just got to... Mom's so upset, she's real sick again. And, and Dad, Dad said it just wasn't any use, and he's gone. Gone? What do you mean? Listen, Don, I sent your dad home at midnight to sleep. He's been working way too hard. Can't stay in Paradise Valley anymore, Roy. Dad said he'd send for Mom and me when he found a safe place again. But he was so discouraged when he left that I just gotta go out and find him right now. Look, Don, there's something mighty wrong. And whatever it is, we want to find out and get started to fixing it up pronto. Now, tell us just what happened. You don't think my dad's been stealing your cattle, do you, Roy? Why, no, of course I don't. Well, when Dad woke up this morning, I took him outside to show him a new trick I taught my horse. And right there, in our own backyard, was one of your heifers. What horse did your dad have, Don? Oh, he was riding big boy. Good. Sherm rode him last night, and a man that treats animals like he does certainly isn't going to press him when he's tired. Well, why don't we go after him and bring him back, Roy? He can't have more than a half hour start on us. That's just exactly what we're going to do, Pat. But Trigger and I'd better go alone, because I've got work for you and Don. I'll do anything for you, Roy. You know that. You just name it. I just want to find out, Don, if maybe you aren't a better tracker than all the rest of us put together. You mean me and Don has got to look for another heifer that's disappeared into nowhere? You bet. There were two taken last night, and there's only one here. If you can find out where the other one went, it's going to make things a lot easier for your dad, Don. How about...
about them? How about them? How about those great nuts flakes? How about those great nuts flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those great nuts flakes? They are so good, good for you too. The two minute energy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about great nuts flakes? Yep, how about those grape nuts flakes? Take good old hands, advice partners. Tomorrow, when you roll out of your bunk, corral a bowl full of that great energy-given cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. Grape Nuts Flakes are called the great two-minute energy cereal because two minutes after you polish off a bowl full, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellers and gals need. You'll go for Grape Nuts Flakes sugar-roasted flavor. It's delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package. I'm sorry I lit out like that, Roy. I just got so panicky and discouraged that I lost my head for a little while. Well, I'm just mighty glad that I found you hidden back instead of having to chase you all over Paradise Valley. I want you to tell me something, Sherm. Well, sure, Roy, if I can. How well do you know George Adams? Why? Why, I've I've just talked to him a couple of times since I brought the family to Paradise Valley. Did you ever know him before, say, years ago? Don't ask me that, Roy, because I can't answer it straight till I've cleared myself. All right, Sherm, if that's the way you feel. And to clear myself, I gotta find out who's rustling your cattle and how they're doing it. Maybe we'll have better luck finding tracks tomorrow. Sure looks like it's going to rain tonight. Yeah, the clouds are heavy up there in the mountains. If the ground gets a good soaking, it'll stay damp for weeks, and heifers have got to leave prints in the mud. I better go home and tell Don and Margaret that everything's going to be all right again. And then, Roy, why don't we try once more to find out how that heifer got from the double R bar to my place? Good. I'll ride with you. Only I guess you won't find Don at home. What do you mean, Roy? Nothing's happened to him, has it? Of course not, Sherm. But he was upset, and I wanted to take his mind off his trouble, so I sent him out with Pat to see if they could find some tracks. I think we'd be better off on horseback, Pat. Yeah, I think we get a fine view of things from Nellie Bell. Hey, look up there at the sky. It's going to rain. I'm not looking at the sky. I'm keeping my eyes on the ground. Hey, Pat, do they have tornadoes around here? Why, no. We sometimes have some mighty strong zephyrs, though. Didn't blow hard last night or any time today, though, did it? No. Why? Well, when we used to live in Kansas, we had tornadoes and what they call whirlwinds. They left a track on the ground just like the one that's leading down this arroyo. Well, I've seen some whirlwinds in my day, too. You know, I've been all over, you know. (laughs) Say, Don, it does look like a whirlwind trail. You think we ought to follow it? Well, it might be interesting. We sure haven't seen any heifer tracks. Of course, it'd be silly to think that a whirlwind could pick up a 500-pound heifer and blow it away, wouldn't it? (laughs) Yeah, that'd be awful silly. Hey, look way up there, Don. One of them helicopter things. Pat, Roy gave me a job to do. And you can go steering up the sky if you want to. But I'm going to keep my eyes on the ground. Just keep heading down the arroyo. I'll spot the trail and tell you whether to steer right or left. You sure Margaret's going to be all right now, Dale? Oh, of course she is. She's dropped off to sleep again, and she's so relieved that you came back. It was awfully nice of you to come down here and stay with her. Oh, I was glad to do it. You run along now and do whatever you and Roy planned. I'll have dinner ready when you come back. Okay. And thanks again, Dale. Don and Pat haven't come back yet, have they? No, they haven't. Say, I hope they don't get soaked to the skin in that crazy open jeep. (laughs) That wouldn't hurt them. They're both young and healthy. Everything all right, Sherm? You bet, Roy. That Dale's a wonderful girl. I'll go along with you there. I guess Pat and Don are in Nellie Bell. Yeah. I noticed they left their horses here, and I can see the tire marks leading away towards the wash. Shall we ride out and find them? I know you're anxious to see Don. Boy, 
Boy, oh boy, wait till we tell Roy about this. Three of his heifers grazing up there on the mesa. But I still don't see how they get them to the mesa without leaving tracks. Wasn't it lucky we followed that whirlwind trail? Oh, it sure was. I knew Nellie Bell was more practical for tracking than a horse. Hey, do you think it's a good idea to go back the same way we come? I, I didn't, I mean, I, I didn't notice before I steeped the sides of this arroyo. Well, it's the quickest way. I guess you're pretty anxious to see your dad, aren't you? I sure am. I just hope Roy found him. Oh, Roy found him all right. Don't you worry about that. What's that noise, Pat? Oh, that's just Nellie Bell's motor. She ain't the quietest old gal in the world, but she's sure a good one. No, I, I don't mean that. Don't you hear sort of a rumbling? Well, I hear thunder now and then. No, no, this is different. He stopped Nellie Bell for a second. Okay. Now you hear it? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we got to get out of here. That's a flash flood. A flash flood? Boy, you said it. A sheet of water comes rushing down from the mountains like an express train. And it could sweep through this arroyo like this in seconds. Come on, Nellie Bell. Hey, Pat, look behind us. There's a sheet of water rolling down. Oh, my golly. It ain't 300 yards away. Come on, girl. Get started. Oh, come on, Pat. We better run for it. Yeah. I guess we better. Come on. If we can just scramble up the banks. Well, we'll try it, Don, but but they're awful steep. Well, we can't make it here. It's almost a sheer cliff. Well, uh, Don, boy, uh, I'm going to pick you up and sling you across my shoulders. Now, don't you worry. We're going to get out of this somehow. I hope. for another Roy Rogers reminder. Always do your best. Yep, friends, that's Roy's reminder for today. He'd like you to try to put all the effort you can behind everything you do, at home, in school, or at play. When you do that, everyone will look up to you. To do his best, a man needs strength and energy, which means you have to stay healthy. And to do that, you've got to eat right. Good, nourishing food like Grape Nuts Flakes the cereal Roy likes best for building up strength and energy. Yes, partners, Roy eats Grape Nuts Flakes for energy. His picture's on every package. Yes, Roy likes those swell-tasting Grape Nuts Flakes because their whole wheat energy starts going to work for you just two minutes after you eat a big, malty-rich bowlful. That's energy you need for most everything you do during the day. And you like sugar-roasted Grape Nuts Flakes. They have a flavor that's malty-rich, makes them mighty good to eat. So if you want to be king of the cowboys in your corral, ask your mom to get you... Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. I don't like the looks of this weather, Sherm. There's a cloudburst over the mountains. I know, Roy. Jeep tracks still lead down this arroyo. I hope Pat and Don are on high ground. Well, they haven't come back this way. Maybe that's a good sign. Pat knows this country pretty well. Roy, look. Way up ahead there. Isn't that water rolling down? It sure is, Sherm. We better get out of this arroyo before... Wait, do you see that? Where? Oh, no. It's a man running down ahead of the flood. He's got something slung over his shoulders. Get your horse out of this arroyo quick, Sherm. You can make it here. Hup, trigger. Come on, boy. Roy. Roy, come back. Don't try it. I got you, Sherm. There's a chance, Trigger, and I can save him. Now go, boy. Go, Trigger. Hey, that's Pat, and he's carrying Don over his shoulders. Head for that wall of water, boy. Come on, Trigger. Pat, Don, we'll get you out. Go back, Roy. It's no use. Sure it is. Whoa, Trigger. Whoa, boy. Hey, I've got Don. Jump up behind me here quick, Pat. Gosh, Roy, I... Okay, I'm up. Now dig in, Trigger. Go, boy. Hey, Don, are you all right? Yeah, I guess so. My ankle's twisted, but I'm okay. Roy, the water's coming so fast and Trigger's carrying triple. Well, if any horse can do it, Trigger can. Stick with us, Trigger. Hey, up ahead there on the bank. Isn't that Dad? It sure is, Don. Your dad's fine and we're going to be. Now, Trigger boy, up this bank. Ah. Roy! Roy, you made it. Oh, Don, Don, my boy. Wow, that was a close one. Roy, how did you happen to be riding down that arroyo? Follow Nellie Bell's tracks, Pat. Oh, poor Nellie Bell. That flood swept right over. You'll be all right, Pat. The main thing is we got you and Don out of there. 
Now, what were you two doing in that arroyo? Well, you see, Roy, we followed a path like the path of a whirlwind. And it led us to a mesa where some of your stolen cattle were grazing. What? Yeah, we seen the brands, Roy. The rustlers are stashing them up there one by one and then taking them away later on a truck. You followed a path like a whirlwind and it led you to the cattle? Well, it was like a whirlwind, Roy. I swear it was. And there were no hoof prints. Just how could that be, Roy? Well, I don't know. Wait, what else happened while you were following that whirlwind trail? What else did you see? Well, there was lightning flashes up in the mountains and a few scared birds flying by and one of them flying windmill things. Uh, he and means it... a helicopter. Yeah, yeah, a helicopter. Oh, wait and a minute. It... I think the mystery's solved. Solved? They may have located some of the cattle, Roy, but I still don't see... Well, well, well they can't have picked the cattle up with a helicopter, Roy. It's too small in the first place, and, well, we'd see tracks where it was lowered down to the ground. I'm not saying they loaded the cattle in the helicopter. But we've got a mighty important errand to do right now. Now, Rogers, what's all this about? I told Alexander a long time ago I didn't want to associate with him. Well, you went a little stronger than that. You told folks around town, too. We can forget all that. I just want you to answer a couple of questions, Adams. Well? You keep your airplane in that big barn, don't you? What of it? You didn't trade your plane off for a helicopter recently, did you? Well, I... What if I did? A helicopter doesn't make a lot of noise, does it, Pat? No, as I understand it, if they ain't gunning the motor to drive forward, well, they can hover without much more than a whirring sound from the blades. What are you getting at, Roy? I'm getting at the way our cattle were stolen, Sherm. A good pilot could come in in a helicopter, hover over a herd, and cut out one or two head without much trouble at all. By golly, I'll bet he could at that. You know, it'd take a pretty slick hand, but them helicopters can hover like a hummingbird. Well, now, Rogers... uh... Just a minute, Adams. If that was the case, the rotor blades would stir up the dust as the pilot drove the animals along and would cover up the hoof prints, wouldn't it? Well, sliver and sidewinders it would at that. And them whirring blades would make a track like a whirlwind. George, you've been doing that? Now, look, Sherm. Uh, I mean, Alexander. You know Sherm Alexander pretty well, don't you, Adams? Suppose you come clean. All right, I will. You got me a... I was getting panicky anyway, thinking of ways to get rid of your cattle. They're all in my barn, what aren't up on the mesa. I did it, and I'll take my medicine. It's about time you said that. Now, suppose you tell us a little more so we can see what sort of medicine you need. Tell them, Sherm. I can't. I've lost everything. Well, Roy, Adams and I were in on a rustling deal years ago. I served a term in jail for it because he wanted to go into the army. And he promised me he'd go straight. By golly, I guess he did. Up until just now. I did, I swear I did. But when Sherm showed up in Paradise Valley, I was afraid of him. I was afraid that my neighbors would find out. I was afraid for my wife and for little Pete. Adams, Sherm took the rap for you once and never told. I should think if you'd been as close as that, you could trust him. We were closer than that, Rogers. I changed my name when I went in the Army. I'm George Alexander, and Sherm's my brother. Your brother? Well, I'll be an eight-toed jackrabbit. No wonder them two kids look so much alike. They're cousins. I'm sorry, George. I never would have told anyone. Well, it's better this way. My conscience couldn't have let me go on much longer. All right, Rogers. I'm ready to go see the sheriff. If you'll give me just a couple of minutes to tell my wife and Pete. We'll have to see the sheriff, but that can wait until tomorrow. As long as you've owned up and I'm getting my heifers back, it isn't going to be too tough for you. Roy will give you a break like he gave me, George. Say, Pat, go in the house and phone Dale. Tell her to put on three extra plates. Hey, she was cooking a turkey and it smelled wonderful. You mean we're all going to have dinner together? I think you prove that you can be a man, George. And on Thanksgiving Day... I think it's a fine thing for families to get together. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, 
Goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal Roy likes best for strength and energy. Look for the picture of Roy and Trigger on the front of the package. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. It's Thanksgiving Day, a warm and friendly day in every home in America. Roy, Dale, Pat and the gang, the Post Cereal family, makers of famous Sugar Crisp and Grape Nuts Flakes, all of us want to send you our best wishes for a very happy Thanksgiving. We hope that you have many things to be thankful for today and that the days ahead may bring you even more. In short, from our Post family to your family, the very best of everything on this Thanksgiving Day. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Great Nuts Flakes. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.